Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Edward for our celebration of the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Before we begin, we ask that you please silence your cell phones. Thank you. Our presider today is Father Jerry. Please join us in singing our gathering song, number 310, Table of Plenty. 310, please stand. Of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning Father. Father. Last night I could not see west. Today I can't see east. It's like a revelation. Last night I was saying, you know, it was like a revelation of an inspirational, but now I have to face this way to receive that. But as we begin our liturgy today, let's pause for a moment and offer prayers for the repose of the soul of Bishop Dale Melchuk and for his funeral liturgy tomorrow at the cathedral, and for his 30 years of service to our diocese, which was just his anniversary a few days ago, in thanksgiving for his service. And then, of course, he was administrator of Our Lady of the Lake and Miller after he retired in 2015, 14, 15, from being our bishop. But with the suddenness of his stroke and his uh, passing away the other day, we want to offer our prayers and our thoughts for him, for his family, and for all whom he served during the course of his life. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for another day in your holy house. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, Lamb of God, who saves our souls. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
spring. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, we may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Max. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are. You will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, 
You have not approached that which could be touched and a blazing fire and gloomy darkness and a storm and a trumpet blast and a voice speaking words such that those who hear begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in festal gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart. This is the true worthy of faith, first holy gospel, this Sunday morning, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. with you and with and your with spirit. spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory, glory to you lord on the sabbath jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading pharisees and the people there were observing him carefully he told a parable for those who had been invited noticing how they were choosing their places of honor at the table when you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet do not recline at the table in the place of honor a more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him. And the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled and the lame and the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of, your because of their inability to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. It's always, uh, it's always nice that you sit, which means you want to homily. And, and Father Rick told me uh, when he invited me to come because he's gone for the weekend, he says, and there's a lot of time between the 8 o'clock and the 11 o'clock mass, so if you want to go out to lunch, breakfast, do so. And I wrote him back and I said, I already got three invitations, so we're really good. But first of all, got to make sure I find people in this sunlight here. <laughs> Ann and Rod, you guys want to stand for a minute, if you would, please? I'll put you on the spot. It was a privilege of mine to marry this couple almost 48 years. It'll be 48 in May, is that what Bradwick said? So let's give them a nice round of applause. 
and it was at St. Peter and Paul in Maryville where Ann belonged at that particular time for sure. So it was really, you, know, you guys haven't aged at all. <laughs> and I don't want an applause for that, but today is my 51st anniversary of, of ordination and bishop. That's, that's right. And, uh, and Bishop Gritka, of course, was the bishop at the time uh, when I was ordained back in 1971. And I was thinking about that last night in the sense of my uh, homily, uh, speaking about Bishop Dale in a sense. It, it reminds us in marriage, ordination, or single way of life in our lives that there's a moment in which we are baptized to begin our ministry. And, and Deacon mentioned to me that at the 1230 liturgy today, there's going to be a little child that's being baptized. Think of the responsibility that you and I have in our roles as parents, grandparents, uh, siblings, uh, ministry, ordination, married life, to help each other develop our lives towards that moment of salvation into the face of Christ. And that's what Bishop Dale experienced the other day when he passed away in his physical body, like many of our loved ones over the course of time. How do we help people in that sense of preparing them as they help prepare us for that indwelling presence of the Lord? We listen today to the Gospel of Luke, which is filled with dinner stories. And Luke is also filled, as are the other Gospels, with parables. At least the synoptics of Mark, Matthew, Luke have many parables within them. And one of the parables that I used last evening, along with that story about the wedding feast today in the Gospel of Luke is again in this area of Lowell, Indiana, as when I'm in Chesterton, that we have a lot of farming communities. When I was out in La Crosse, Indiana as a pastor for many years, it was a strictly farming community. And I remember again going with the farmers out again to plant the seed, to make sure it develops, and then harvest comes throughout the year in this part of the world. And what do we need to do to cultivate from the universities like Purdue, for example, the agricultural concept of making sure that we have a good produce, that the seed really does germinate and does grow. And as the gospel in, in both Mark, Matthew, and Luke in that sense story says that when Jesus goes out and sows seed, some falls on pathways, some fall on rocks, some fall on thorns, and eventually some fall on good soil. And so the question is, how's the soil of your soul today? Are you attracted by, for example, like in those stories of the thorns and the rocks and the path, is the worldly anxiety of things more important for us than is the Lord's grace? Today you are invited, you and I, we all, were invited to the Lord's Supper, as St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians. He uses that term, Lord's Supper, I love it. You know, we're used to mass or liturgy, etc., etc., terms that we've used throughout our lives. But there's nothing better that hits the mind than the Lord's Supper, supper, dinner. And the Lord's meal is not fast food that we're accustomed to in our culture today. It is food that nourishes and sustains us for the adventures of our life this week, regardless of what takes place. Personally, or in family, or in our country, or in the world, that the Lord is with us, and we know that. And that's why I think it's imperative that when you and I are baptized into Christ Jesus, and then we receive Eucharist, and confirmation today at the 11 o'clock liturgy, those preparing for confirmation will be present, and I will be speaking with them as well in that sense. When I was confirmed, you know, in third grade at that particular time, after years of being baptized in 1945, being baptized, you know, what happened in the course of my life that allows me that on this day of August 28th of 2022 to still be here in the place of preaching and ministering to the Lord's praise? Am I aware from my own meditation and prayer, how is my soul, soil doing? And am I maintaining a sense, listen to Sirach today, humility, humility is essential for us. 
how privileged we are to be invited to the Lord's Supper. And yet here today you are because you have responded to the Lord's invitation. And a question would be for all of us, maybe this week at work or at school or at home, wherever it is, would you say to someone, would you come with me to the Lord's Supper on Sunday over at St. Edward's? And allow them to respond yes or no to that. But how are we inviting? And listen again to that gospel today. The Lord's Supper's open. You know, and when we have celebrations, and all of us know in weddings or ordination, and we have dinners, and, and the place that we have our reception maybe seats 300 or 100, and then we have a list of people, we have to make a cutoff. You know, we have to cut off at a certain point because we can only have a certain amount. It is not that way with the Lord. The Lord invites the world to his dinner. And it doesn't matter what condition you and I are in, meaning whether we're at rocks or thorns or in a footpath or where our souls are at that time, it is still the Lord's mercy that gathers us together in order that he may feed us with his word, which we just heard from Sirach and Hebrews and Luke. And then he nourishes us with his body and blood. We consume his presence. Think about that for a minute. There is nothing more intimate in relationship than receiving the Lord. We consume him. Think of this when you come forward to receive the Eucharist, when Deacon and I receive the Eucharist. We are consuming the Lord. Do we take on his resurrected life so that when we leave this church structure, that we are the walking tabernacles of the Lord's presence out there in Lowell, Indiana, or wherever we may happen to live, in order that we may present in all humility the goodness of God's presence. So we are kind and generous. And listen to that responsorial psalm today. You know, the Lord builds a house, a house for the poor, for us. And humbled we are to stand in the presence of the Lord. We should never say, Lord, I am not worthy. I mean, we say that, obviously. We say that at liturgy. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. It's the Lord saying, I do love you. I do forgive you. And that's what couples say when they make that vow of marriage. Or an ordination, as Deacon and myself, in that sense. We say that. Yes, Lord, I trust that your words to me are true and honest and everlasting. So that when that moment comes, as it did for Bishop Dale, as it did for our loved ones, at that moment in which this body of ours, this tent, as St. Paul says, dies and returns to dust, we do not. But rather we enter into the fullness of the Lord's presence face to face. Think of that. Think of that desire, longing. Again, the beautiful example of that is in that marriage covenant when couples stand together and hold hands and look at each other face to face and said, I will love you all the days of my life. And when you look into the eyes of the other, the one who you love and the one that you will continue to love over the years amidst the obstacles that take place. And in those difficult times when that doesn't happen, how do we express that in family, loved ones and friends and sorrow and sadness and things of that nature? that we still continue to hope and pray again that the Lord again recognizes the great desire I have to love and to show mercy and forgiveness in my life. That's what we do here at the supper. Because it's not that. This is not a drive through This is to come and pause and reflect upon the Lord's presence so that I may be the Lord's presence to others as I venture this week. And that's why at our baptism, I think in a very special way, that when we look at this water and we have that Easter candle, that Christ candle there, we are immersed in these waters and the candle is given to us at our baptism that we may, as Luke's gospel and Matthew and and again the synoptics say, that we are the light of the world, we are the soul of the earth because we are his disciples today. We discipline our lives around the teachings of Christ. That's the good news. That's the good news. And you and I are so involved in the news industry of today. We pick sides. We like this news better than this news. We like this attitude because of a political nature of it rather than this way or this way or this way. But how do we meditate upon the word of God that is the absolute truth and we live out that truth of God's word within our lives? That took place in our baptism. 
when we were asked, or our parents were, or our godparents, or members of our family. Will you teach and live the gospel message? I will. I will. Will be you nourished with his presence? I will. Because I believe that on Sunday, the Lord's Day, Saturday evening and Sunday, that it is important for me to respond wherever I am to the invitation to come and eat. Make sure that not only today, but next Sunday, and maybe during this week, you can take a moment to ask somebody else, would you come with me to the Lord's Supper next Sunday at 8 o'clock or 11 or 5 on Saturday? Would you do that with me? And allow that person to respond like you respond to the Lord's invitation, come and eat. Consume me and live out as my disciple and make sure that your souls continue to be nourished and enriched with the snows and the rains of the Lord. And just in conclusion, because I have to finish before 11. <laughs> Isaiah says it so nicely in chapter 55 of Isaiah, just, and this is good again for the fertile soil of our land, just as the snows and rains come down from heaven, they do not return to me void, but will accomplish the task for which I sent them. Bishop Dale, our loved ones and our friends who have passed away, it isn't the amount of time they've lived or the jobs or ministries or whatever way of life they were, but have they accomplished the task for which I have sent them? Have we, at this moment, accomplished the task? It doesn't seem we're done yet. That's why we're here to eat. To have the strength to live this week. Amen. Please rise, everyone. And as I invited, invited the folks last evening, because we don't have a sprinkling right here at this liturgy today, but at the end of the liturgy, as you take leave of the church, I would invite you to come forward and dip your hands in these baptism waters making that sign of the cross and remember the, your baptism or the stories of your baptism and your profession of faith. So let's today respond to these questions as we pronounce our profession of faith. Do you believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son or Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And then one final amen. Please, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so, my sisters and brothers, as we pause today, let's invite the Lord to listen to these special prayers and intercessions that we have for this day. For all who bring the gospel message to the world through their example of living humble lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve the cause of peace, especially those serving in our armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who conform themselves to the Lord's call, not to the call of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parishioners who are preparing for the sacrament of confirmation next spring and who are on retreat today, and for all who seek to grow in the gifts of the Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, for Sharon Wachowski, whose funeral was last Thursday, and for Bishop Melchick, whose funeral is Monday, may they find peace with Christ in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our parishioners who remember a special way at this liturgy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for your invitation to come and share in your life and your meal. 
Give us the courage and strength to be nourishment to others who we encounter this week. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our preparation song is number 408, Earthen Vessels, number 408. Let us now pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confirm us always the blessings of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you truly are our Father and that you care for all of your daughters and your sons. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory. It's without end we acclaim. <laughs>
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst. When we are gathered by his love and when, as once with the disciples, here on this Sunday morning for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before Jesus was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he himself took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was in, he took the chalice and once more given you thanks, he said the blessing. And handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, and the entire people that you have made your very own. Open our eyes this week to the needs of all of our sisters and our brothers. Inspire in each of us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church, which we are, stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, so that all people of every nation may be raised up to a new hope. And remember our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to the eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and martyrs, St. Edward, our own patron saints and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
And so let us now pray with confidence to the Father in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace your grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distrust. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Eucharistic and risen Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us share a sign of peace. Peace, Father. Bless the table between your family as well, too. Thank you very much. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing our communion song, number 327, On Katawan Ni Cristo, number 327. Come to share our lives. Body of Christ. 
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in all of our neighbors. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Can Molly pick up in the vestibule is this weekend. Uh, parade t-shirts are in. Pick up at the ministry center, meeting room. Go to the back door and up the steps. Speaking of the parade, we have enough water, thank you, but still need donations for candy. For those who would like to ride on the float, we'll post details as soon as we get them from Lowell. There is adoration on Friday with benediction at 7 p.m. First Saturday, 9 a.m. Mass with confessions. Next weekend, Labor Day weekend, altar and rosary will be having their mum sale Saturday and Sunday from 9 to 5 until sold out. Also, there will be a hospitality breakfast next Sunday. For Bishop Melchick's funeral arrangements on Sunday, August 28th, the rite of reception of the body will take place at Holy Angels Cathedral at 1 p.m. Visitation will take place from 1.30 to 8 p.m. for the Vespers at 5 p.m. and Compline at 7.45. On Monday, August the 29th, visitation will resume from 8.30 to 9.45 from the, followed by Louds. The Mass or Christian burial will begin at 10.30 a.m. Everything is open to the public and liturgies will be live streamed on the Diocese of Gary YouTube page. Also, we'd like to thank you, Father, for a wonderful Mass and happy anniversary again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate that thought. Um, I had the opportunity when Bishop Dale came to the diocese in 1992. In 1994, he asked me to be chancellor of the diocese, which I was for three years. But I was pastor of St. Matthias in Crown Point at the time, and he told me to take a small parish out in the country. So instead of being 10 minutes away, you know, I was 32 miles away from the chancery <laughs> office, and I served out at Sacred Heart in Wanata and St. Martin's in, in La Crosse and St. Mary's in Otis uh, for many years as well, too. But it's always wonderful to have the opportunity when asked to do something special for the diocese or for the local parish, as Father Rick does with all of you in a very special way. And you can obviously, when I've been going around for seven years of retirement already, different parish communities, thank you for your participation. Deacon, thank you. Max, thank you so much also for the, those presenting the offertory gifts for the music department as well, too, and for all of you in your participation today. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon all of us and our family now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forward glorifying the Lord in our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Have a very blessed week, everyone. Our closing song is number 387, God Has Chosen Me, number 387.
Yes, God's time is near. God's time is near.